All right, well, we're going to leave this rim pod down here. And if you need us, just alert it like you just did. And we'll come on down and we'll. I had to grab a hold of the wall. All right. You're OK, though. It hurt my leg. I'm sorry to hear that. Arrived at your house, I immediately saw a dead guy sitting on the porch. And he was sitting in a chair smoking a cigar. Whoever is here who's non-living, we'd love to talk with you. You can use any of the lights that you see. That's and what's weird is that goes off every time, and now they're both going, you know what I'm saying? It's like, if there are more than one of you here. Number 10, Sinister Spirits Unleashed. In this spine-chilling transcript, a family's peaceful home becomes a battleground for unseen forces. Cindy, the investigator, uncovers a haunting reality as she meets Brittany and her father, Bill. They describe a barrage of terrifying encounters, from shadow figures to violent attacks, leaving them desperate for relief. The atmosphere thickens as Cindy reveals her vision of a mob of restless souls linked to graves disturbed nearby. Bill recounts physical attacks and sinister whispers, hinting at a malevolent entity manipulating his thoughts. The horror escalates with Jesse's tragic passing away, possibly linked to paranormal influences. Drawings of dark entities and cryptic messages in blood-like script add to the macabre ambiance, suggesting a presence fueled by rage and vengeance. The revelation of a spirit fueled by hatred towards women, sends shivers down the spine. The family's mood swings and uncharacteristic behavior paint a portrait of a home under siege by malevolent forces. As scratching sounds and disturbing voices permeate the walls, the sense of dread intensifies. Sinister Spirits Unleashed captures a chilling tale of paranormal activity, where every shadow hides a potential threat and every whisper holds a sinister promise. Number 9. Basement Haunting in the eerie depths of the Norton family home, a chilling saga unfolds as the Ghost Brothers brave encounters with restless spirits. The family's torment, from thrown objects to unsettling whispers, sets the stage for a bone-chilling investigation. Ascending to the second floor, the brothers encounter inexplicable phenomena. Not reacting to unseen forces, whispers of being stuck, and a pervasive feeling of unease. As they delve deeper, they uncover a spirit's plea for help and a lingering presence resisting departure. All right, well, we're going to leave this rim pod down here. And if you need us, just alert it like you just did, and we'll come on down and we'll. Is that the rim pod? Oh. Yo, 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 we should get up there. Do you live here? <laughs> Sir, here. The basement secrets remain elusive, shadows of past horrors lingering in the dark corners. As the investigation continues, the Ghost Brothers confront unseen fears, uncovering the unyielding grip of entities refusing to let go. Number 8. Unnerving Encounters – Juwan's Ghostly Test In the heart of South St. Paul, the Ghost Brothers confront a menacing presence plaguing Brian and Diana's home. Scratches, shadow figures, and unexplained phenomena set the stage for a chilling investigation. As Juwan becomes the bait for the elusive spirit, tensions rise. The spirit box echoes with cryptic messages, mentioning names like Mike and revealing military ties, adding layers of mystery to the haunting. A daring experiment in the bathroom leads to a startling revelation. Juan's name echoed in the spirit box, raising questions about his safety in the house. The unnerving encounter leaves the team on edge, wondering about the spirit's intentions and the looming danger. With cabinet doors slamming and communication from beyond, the night unfolds with intense activity pushing the Ghost Brothers to seek answers from historical sources the next day. The lingering sense of unease hints at a deeper, darker presence lurking within the haunted confines of the house. Number 7. Terror in the Home In a quiet home, terror lurks as unseen forces wreak havoc on Paula and Stanley's family. Cindy's revelations cut deep. A menacing spirit, Ron, haunts their living room, pushing and intimidating. The past echoes with Dan Gibson's restless spirit fixated on money and property feuds. The garage becomes a battleground, electronics malfunctioning amidst family strife. Paula's fear intensifies as poltergeist activity escalates, tools flying dangerously. The sinister presence of a vengeful woman intensifies, suffocating sleepers and leaving bruised bodies in her wake. Paula Jr.'s chilling encounters confirm the nightmare bruises, scratches, and a spectral figure tugging at curtains. The spirit's malevolence seeps through, desiring destruction and passing away. As the family's turmoil fuels the paranormal, Cindy unveils a portal of dread, inviting sinister entities. 
The once peaceful home now harbors a malevolent energy, threatening to consume them all. Really close to people and tries to intimidate them. And I also saw him shoving someone in the kitchen area. I had to grab a hold of the wall. All right, you're okay though. It hurt my leg. I'm sorry to hear that. I mean, yeah, the fact that I felt the heart attack in the house, he's pissed about money, yeah. it all makes sense. Number six, terror in the shadows. In Megan's home, whispers echo and unseen hands tease. Dalen's shirt tugs mysteriously, mirroring Megan's eerie experiences. The kitchen becomes a realm of whispers and hair-raising touches. As Dalen isolates himself, the paranormal intensifies. Malicious intent seeps through, targeting the vulnerable. The bedroom reveals spectral orbs and unsettling movements, confirming a haunting presence. Venturing to the storage shed uncovers a chilling truth. A propane tank nearly turned deadly, a sinister act. Undeterred, the team confronts the shed's darkness, challenging Mr. Creepy's malevolence head-on. A night in the shed beckons danger as the team seeks answers amidst spectral encounters. With breakfast banter and brave resolve, they navigate the thin line between curiosity and peril, unearthing the shed's dark secrets. Number 5. The Butcher's Legacy Donalyn and Dennis confront a haunting revelation. The Butcher has laid claim to their home. Cindy's chilling findings reveal a portal harboring malevolent entities, with the Butcher's vile presence looming large. The Butcher's history, a gruesome tale of unspeakable acts, mirrors Cindy's visions. Joe Ball's spree, hidden behind the facade of wealth, terrorized an entire community, leaving a trail of victims. Cindy's sketches capture the Butcher's macabre presence, evoking fear and dread. The family's turmoil, fueled by the Butcher's malevolence, manifests in poltergeist activity and a palpable atmosphere of fear. Is the poltergeist activity that's happening in this house. And you told me you've been having experiences your whole life, right? Mm -hmm. You know, seeing things, hearing things. Arrived at your house, I immediately saw a dead guy sitting on the porch. And he was sitting in a chair smoking a cigar. Now, this guy served in World War I, but something wasn't right with this guy when he got back. He opened up a seedy bar. As the truth unfolds, Donna Lynn and Dennis confront the chilling reality of their home's dark past, haunted by the butcher's legacy a harrowing ordeal with no escape from the horrors that linger. Number 4. Unraveling the Nightmare Cynthia and Pedro's home is a battleground of terrifying paranormal activity, and Cindy delves deep into the chilling truth that lurks within its walls. The onslaught of poltergeist activity, from pebbles thrown at windows to doors slamming with inexplicable force, paints a picture of relentless torment. Cynthia's physical encounters, from bruising to being shoved, testify to the malevolent presence that haunts their home. Cindy uncovers the unsettling truth of three restless spirits, each fixated on wreaking havoc on different family members. The lost-everything man embodies financial ruin and harbors a vendetta against prosperity, targeting those responsible for financial decisions. The revelation of Dr. Earl Brown, a once prominent doctor turned victim of financial calamity, sheds light on the origins of the home's curse. Earl's tragic downfall, losing everything within months of acquiring the property, speaks volumes about the relentless vengeance he seeks from beyond the grave. As Cindy's findings unravel the darkness shrouding the house, Cynthia and Pedro grapple with the terrifying reality of their situation. The battle against unseen forces rages on, leaving them to confront the chilling truth that their home is a battleground of spirits seeking retribution and torment. Number 3. Eerie Encounter – Nancy's Haunting Confession in a dimly lit room, ghost hunters set up equipment to communicate with the non-living. As they beckon spirits, lights flicker, confirming a presence. A voice emerges, claiming to be Nancy, a former psychologist with a dark tale. Nancy reveals a yearning for her past life, lamenting her burial with vivid memories haunting her. She speaks of birds and love, yet her spectral form is trapped, unable to move on. By your current state, your current condition, are you surprised that you are here? Whoever is here who's non-living, we'd love to talk with you. You can use any of the lights that you see. Her final words echo eerily, urging the living not to fear. The investigators, shaken by Nancy's regrets, warn of the consequences of neglecting life's joys. The chilling encounter leaves an unsettling feeling, a reminder of the haunting consequences of unfinished business beyond the grave. Number 2. Confronting the Unknown Adam's descent into the basement mirrors his escalating dread. 
A female presence, accusing him of past harm, sends chills down his spine. Fumbling for reassurance, Adam promises safety, yet the spirit's unease persists. Enter Colton, a catalyst for paranormal unrest, his mere presence triggering intense activity. As the investigation unfolds, Adam finds himself in Colton's room, the spirit box crackling with eerie responses. Voices echo warnings and pleas, revealing a household teetering between peace and chaos. The family's discordant energies fuel the supernatural turmoil, forcing a confrontation with the unknown. With boundaries blurred and spirits clamoring for resolution, the stage is set for a harrowing journey into the basement's depths. Number 1. Unveiling the Yost Family Secrets In a chilling exploration, Amy and her team delve into the mysteries lurking within the Yost family's former abode. The bathroom's whispers of scratches and shadows lead to a tense setup of paranormal trip wires. A music box becomes a conduit, playing eerie melodies as unseen forces manipulate it. Questions hang heavy in the air as the team tries to communicate with the lingering spirits. Through flashing lights and enigmatic responses, the Yost family's history unfolds. Secrets emerge from the depths of the past, revealing the intricate web of relationships and unresolved tensions. The final revelation comes with the Bible of Cecil French, a key to unlocking the family's lineage and the untold stories woven within these haunted walls. Amy and I are investigating down at this end of the hallway. What's happening is someone is interacting with us and making all of our gear go off. The reason that they're having activity here is because they're sensitive. We'll Opened up an, a channel of communication. And what's weird is that goes off every time, and now they're both going, you know what I'm saying? It's like, if there are more than one of you here... As psychic impressions unravel the tales of sickness, care, and sensitive connections, the team uncovers a channel of communication that bridges the gap between the living and the departed. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.